All right, so I wanted to show you how to use this data hub. Just a little bit of an example here of how to communicate with a very simple instance in the model to, uh, to instances outside the model of CSV files. There's none, not a database, not an OSLC connector, but just something simple. So you can create a new database by, well, first of all, you can open it by going to Tools, uh, Data Hub, and then open the Data Hub Explorer. That'll pop up this sidebar or sidecar here. And to add a data source, I have a couple data sources here. Um, let me show you. I have, for instance, this UAV attributes uh, CSV file. And the reason why I'm showing you here is I have an actual backend that's an API. I'll show you how that works. It's pretty, pretty neat. Um, and it, it allows us to talk to other tools pretty easily. So a um, little bit of a data set here. These are actually instances I made here first, then exported them as, as CSVs through uh, the table, you know, instance table, and then just saved them here for... Um, communication back and forth of the model. And this is basically just a few sets of UAVs that I took a, a guess at, whatever. But um, move that out of the way. So we'll go ahead and add that data source, which is called UAV attributes.csv. So it's added here. Go here, click CSV, or browse for it. Um, and the reason why the API is even involved here, so we don't have to work on a local, you know, we don't have to work on local files. Later on, when we have the API run, you'll see that we can communicate with this externally. So key is UAV ID, labels, uh, model name, comma, set save automatically when changes are made so that it updates, you know, when you mess with them up with the data, create. There it is. Simple. And you'll see it here. It's got, it's got those guys in here. You can look at them. There's the data sets for each one, but then this is where it gets a little confusing. So the way to make this work is you want to create these in as instances. So over here, I have an instance table, UAV instances, UAV instances here. You want to drag Predator over. You can do them all at once, but I'll just drag Predator over and drop it on the folder, on the package. Now this window will come up and say, hey, what do you want to do? So it's copying the data. It's creating these links. And you want to go ahead and you want to have it. You can do one of three ways, a two-way sync. You can, do, you can have a sync you know, out from Cameo or sync into Cameo. So here I'll do a two-way sync just to show you some external stuff. Um, and then you want to select the UAV. So here's how this, this is a little confusing. You have to actually make an instance inside the model of the UAV in order for this instance specification to show up. If you don't do that, you won't see this instance specification. So you can map to it. Everything's already set up. Uh, model name is going to go to name. That's the only thing I didn't have set up. Actually, you know, you saw that when I brought it in, I switched that key or that uh, identifier. And then I hit OK and you'll see an instance shows up. All right, cool. So now this thing is synced back and forth. So this model um, can update that uh, data file and the data file can update the model pretty easily. So let's just do that first. Let's modify, we'll call this predator X. Hit enter here or exit here. What you do is you go out and you can say, uh, you can tell it to synchronize. You can tell it to check changes. Here's a check change. It tells you what, uh oh Sorry. Oh, there it is. Check changes. You can look at what's been different in the model. So we know that's, we know I changed that there. I, all, I, all I have to do is actually hit control alt L. I map that key and it's updated. So now when you look over here, this is X. And if I look back at my model here, you can see in the, um, the actual CSV file, it's X. And so in the CSV file, if I change this back to, let's say XX and I'll save it. When I come back here, I just click on the um, database identifier here, data source, and hit sync, and boom, your model's back up to date. So in and out right there, pretty easy. Not a big deal, but this is a nice part to it. So I added this, you can see here on this, um, on this page here, this is a VS Code. I built a little app. This app is called App5, <laughs> but it really what it is is a Flask API. And so I have it running here, and it's running on uh, 127, you know, localhost 5000. So if I go to localhost 5000, let me just show you here. Pull it right here, right there. And I, I have to log in first. I had it made a uh, loginable. Uh, let's see, web. It's going to be admin and a login password. And so now you can see any data set that's in that little folder on. This is a server. Now, think of this as a server that we run as like a micro server or a very simple server that carries some data sets for us. Um, and these data sets kind of act as a middle point for everybody to look at them. 
And it's, this is very, very simple to do. This code here is literally 60 lines of 72 lines. My, you know, subtract all the spaces, it's probably 50 lines, 60 lines of code. You can look at them. So here's UAV attributes, there it is. I can look at all these guys. I can actually search this, I can say, and uh, wingspan m is equal to 4.2. And it'll give you any special, if you're, you, know, you wanna search this and then actually pull the data out. You use this API to interface with other tools. Other tools now can, simulations can ingest that, that JSON file right there very, very easily. It's not a big deal for them to do this. So, uh, and also you can make really complex JSON files pretty easily too, very super nested files. So let's go back. Um, what I wanted to show you here is that there's a VXX. So simply enough, I can't, <clears throat> I don't, I can actually make this editable so I can change it from the app here, this API app. Not necessary right now. I just wanted to show you that the data is synced and uh, accessible through a UA, I mean, through a URL call by anybody external to this whole little setup I have here. So if I go back, let's just change the mission UAV to, you know, X, let's go to, you know, YY. We'll save it. It's already going to be updated here when I hit refresh, right? So that's a problem. That shouldn't happen. It should only happen after I update it from the Cameo model. That's, that's what I think right now, but we, we can fix that. But you'll see when I go back here, it's updated here also. So done. Back and forth, uh, that's pretty neat. And uh, we can use this, this is a nice way to do some very simple transitions of data in and out. We have to walk through this whole process and develop where and when it can change and who and what can change it. So, all right, that's it for today, thanks.